right time. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar, Five C's of Successful Farming Strategy with RPR, hosted by Katie. All right. The States and Homes is a nationwide brokerage which offers 100% commission, 100% support, and zero franchise fees. Why split your commission if you don't need to? You earned it all, so shouldn't you keep it all? Our goal at Allison James is to always give back to our agents by providing education, training sessions, live webinars, live events, and full broker support with the most up-to-date tools and technology available. We are always looking for new tools and ways to be able to provide them to our agents at a lower or discounted price so you can keep your hard-earned money. We are also proud to announce that Allison James Estates and Homes has recently partnered with the number one lead generation, CRM, and automation system, KB Core. We are thrilled to provide the amazing product at a low cost to all our agents. Signing up for KB Core outside of Allison James would cost over $500 a month. We are proud to provide this product at a deeply discounted rate. Today's webinar is sponsored by our preferred lender, Movement Mortgage. For more information about Allison James Estates and Homes, please visit us at www.ajicareers.com. Now, please remember, if you have any questions throughout today's presentation, you can submit your questions into the chat box on your Zoom control panel. And we will have a Q&A session at the end of the pr presentation. I would like to now hand it over to our speaker today, Katie. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, how are you? Good. Do you have, would you like me to share the screen, make you the host? Sure, that would okay. be wonderful. Oh, I think I am um, set as a participant, so I should just be able to- Share your screen. Um, yeah, hang on. Okay, no problem. Um, I use the same Zoom, like this, we are Zoom users too. So this actually works pretty easy. I feel awesome. like, um, I feel like I did them all my, all on my own. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right. So we, are we ready to go? Yes, ma'am. We're ready. Wonderful. Well, welcome everyone. And thank you for attending today's presentation. What we're going to talk about today is the five C's of a successful farming strategy using RPR. Uh, and we'll do a brief PowerPoint presentation and then I'll go through those five tips. Uh, if you have a question, please feel free to uh, use the chat or use the Q&A option on your Zoom control panel. I'll be able to read it and respond to it during the webinar. Uh, that way I can make sure everyone gets their questions answered uh, before we conclude today's demo. But just to get started, um, at RPR, we know that you guys want to be a wildly successful realtor, and in order to do that, you need to close more deals. And we believe your hard work should lead to success, uh, which is why we built the nation's largest property database exclusively for realtors. RPR is a parcel-centric property database. We aggregate over 350 different data sets of public record information and publish it into our system. So that's property characteristics, um, mortgage history, sales history, tax history, marketplace statistics, flood data, traffic counts, area demographics, school information, and so much more. And then for your local market, if you're in an area where your MLS is partnered with RPR, you also have that layer of your MLS active sold and off-market data available to you as well. And this is all available 
as a member benefit through the National Association of Realtors. So this is dues funded. You do not pay any additional fees to have access to our desktop or our mobile application. In RPR, we don't syndicate, we don't publish, we don't redistribute, and we don't sell. The only ones that have access to this platform are realtors. We don't have a consumer search engine. We don't publish information anywhere. So the only place or the only way members of the public would get this information is through their Realtor. Now this presentation actually came to us from an agent that works out in Staten Island, New York. She actually commented and reached out to us through our blog just to say thank you on how she uses RPR to farm within her team. Um, Claire Bizignano Chesoff still believes that farming really comes down to being belly to belly with those in her market. So she still door knocks, she still establishes relationships. Um, and this works very well for her. So she told us some of the components that she does, and we developed our five C's off of that. So what we're gonna learn today is how to calculate the marketability of your target zone. And what we mean by that is being able to identify the turnover rate within a particular market to identify if it's worth your while to farm in that area. If you have a high number of properties and a low number of sales, you're not gonna get your ROI back on that investment to farm. So we wanna make sure you guys can go into RPR, look at a targeted area and determine, on average, how many number of homes sell on an annual basis in that area. We want you to be able to create a customized farm area using search tools and maps. Number one, it allows you to customize your target zone. That way you can identify a market that's always gonna be within your budget to farm. Remember, when you're farming, you want to be able to farm on a consistent basis, which we'll get more to in just a minute. We're also going to share ways that you can converse with homeowners using our RPR mobile app and reports with property details and market conditions. That way you have the ability to answer any question when you get belly to belly with members of your farm area. We also want you to be able to convey your value. If you're farming an area and you come across a for sale by owner property, we want you to be able to determine the value of their home and how the value of their home compares to others in the market, maybe even be able to create a comparative market analysis right through your mobile device for that homeowner. And most importantly, you have to cultivate your brand awareness. We can assist you with customizing your reports Targeting reports that pique the homeowner's interest and making sure that your brand and your marketing is all over those reports. So we're going to step back for a second and just talk real quick about farming. Farming is just geographical prospecting. It's a proven method of marketing your business. It helps you raise awareness of your brand. It helps you capture leads and earn referrals and gain listings. Plus, it's an excellent opportunity to connect with potential sellers and for sale by owners in your farm market. So there are a couple of questions that you want to ask yourself when you're identifying a farm area. So you want to make sure as you're going through that you identify some markets and some neighborhoods that are easy to get to that are within your normal commute, and that you can touch on a consistent basis. Okay? So about every three to four weeks. You wanna make sure again that that area has an acceptable turnover rate. Industry experts tell us that you wanna see about five to 7% or higher. That's gonna ensure that the 
ROI on your investment will be, be there. You always want to know the activity that your farm area has. You want to be aware of the active listings, the pended properties, the days on market, the number of solds. You want to know how the market's doing in that farm area. Values increasing or decreasing? Is there a high number of distressed properties? Is there part of the farm area that's in a flood zone? Make sure you're aware of where those boundaries are. And then budget. Is the number of homes manageable for a consistent marketing outreach? Always keep your cost and your available resources in mind. Because again, you need to sustain your farming campaign consistently. This isn't a endeavor where for three to four weeks, you're gonna send out a postcard and see if you get any calls. You need to touch them every three to four weeks for most times, more than 12 months at a time. So think of that and keep that in mind as we go through the presentation today. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to jump in to our RPR homepage. And we're going to start off our search to help calculate the marketability of your target zone. Now, in order to do this and determine your target zone, I wanna share with you just a couple of ways that you can identify these zones. So the first way that we're gonna do it is just come into the All Properties search tab. Now, your headquarters is located in Carlsbad, so that's kind of the demo area that I've chosen today. So I'm going to come in and type in the city name, and I'm going to target a particular zip code just so I can kind of narrow down the market that we're looking for. Okay, so I'm doing an all property search tab. If you want a value range, minimum or maximum, you can enter that information in. If you want to target farm areas that are maybe a particular property style, you can narrow down by that property style. And I'm just going to click on this magnifying glass to get to our search results. The reason why I want to do that is because my objective here really is just to be able to get to the map. Okay, this is all I really want is the map of the area that I'm in. Now we do have some map tools that we're gonna focus on a little bit later, but the map tools that I wanna focus on first are these tools that you see at the top of the page. So these map tools, the one to the far right is our map tools called Show Geographies. And these show geographies allow you to focus on boundaries, okay, by looking at the, the latitude and longitude of that boundary line. So if you wanna look at zip code boundaries, if you're looking to target a market area maybe next to your area, but you're not familiar with the zip code or you wanna confirm a zip code, you can look at our zip code overlays to determine those boundaries. You can also take a look at census tract information. So if you want to search within a certain census tract. Now, your geographies are going to be based off of a zoom level. So there is a key feature I want you to look at within this show geographies. And that is our neighborhood layers. And our neighborhood layers are macro, intermediate, and minor. Now these vary from across the country. So I want you to come in here, click on your macro neighborhoods, see if these neighborhoods load. You can click on your macro neighborhood and it's gonna show you what that border is for that macro neighborhood. You have your intermediate neighborhoods. If I zoom in even a little bit more here, you're gonna get to a more granular, almost like a subdivision level. And you can click into these. It will tell you the name of the neighborhood. 
So if you want to search in that geography, you can search in that geography. But if you just want to get an idea of where these neighborhoods are, and then in some places we have minor neighborhoods. And minor neighborhoods usually pop up um, as well. Sometimes in some markets, these are uh, a complex within a larger subdivision. So take a look at those neighborhood fields. And then if you maybe have a, an expertise where you work within school zones, you can also target particular school zones as well. And these school zones are level separated, so it's elementary, middle, and high school. So you do have the ability to identify and search in that geography as well. So that is a good way to get a visual of some of the communities maybe around where you are that you could potentially be interested in farming. I love the visual component where you could see the cross streets of a market that you're potentially looking to target. But when you wanna really get into the nitty gritty information, I'm just gonna copy and paste this city and zip code. And I'm gonna go back to my homepage and now I'm gonna click on the neighborhood tab on our search bar. So it's really important that you make sure you're on a neighborhood search. You want this one highlighted in that orange tone. You're gonna enter whatever the neighborhood boundary is, whether it's a, a city, whether it's a particular zip code. And then the most important feature, so I want all eyes on this screen right now, is this type dropdown that you see just below that search field. You wanna be sure that this type dropdown is set to within. Because if I looked at the visual and I wrote down a couple of subdivisions or information that I'm interested in, I can now come into my neighborhood search. I'm going into that same zip code I'm clicking my within boundary. I'm selecting this magnifying glass. And that's gonna load all of the communities that are within that zip code. And we can take a look at these. Let's take a look at Nantucket. We get that median estimated home value. We get property value growth last year, since last year, the current inventory of homes for sale, the median list price, the median days on market, and the homes that are in the neighborhood. So quickly, I can identify if 185 homes in a neighborhood is within my budget. Maybe 251 is a little outside of my budget. So you can kind of get a snapshot where you can come in and you can identify neighborhoods in a market that are having positive property value growth over the last year. So that's one thing that you already know. We have property value growth. You have a idea of the median estimated home value you know there's active inventory, you can target places with low days on market, and homes in a neighborhood. So when you're looking through those communities, you can kind of identify some markets that, hey, this would be a good one to check out. So let's go ahead and check out Nantucket and Carlsbad. So again, I'm just gonna copy and paste that subdivision name. And I'm gonna go back to my home page. And I'm gonna to go to our All Properties Search tab. From our All Properties Search tab, I'm just gonna come in. I'm gonna put in my Nantucket and Carlsbad. And I'm gonna hit this magnifying glass. You'll see here we get the street border of all the communities, now when you're, we're looking at this in a map view, 
So you'll see that Alice and James brand on the upper left hand side. Just below that we have a list view and a map view. And what happens when you're looking at the map view is the list view just drops to the bottom of that information. But we see a bunch of properties here and we see a bunch of gray roofs that have values. These are off market properties. I have a financially distressed property. I can tell already we have a couple of lots. We have a few that sold. I have one that's active. So I can know what's going on with my inventory right off the bat. And then you'll see some blank information here. The reason why this information is not appearing here is because we're going to show you the first 100 properties of our search results, which is 186 properties. So if I go to page number two, you're going to see all of those property values pop up for the rest of them. So that's why it kind of seems like the map is half filled with parcel information. Our maximum set of search results is 100. So we're looking at 186 properties. Um, but we can look at both pages if we want to get an idea of everything that's going on. So let's talk about calculating that marketability of our target zone. So we want to identify how many properties sold in previous years. Now, I always like to go back and check out consistency. Um, I am, it, it kind of falls in my market, I guess. Uh, I'm a trainer and to me, knowledge is power, so I am an information overkill kind of person. But just to show you how you can easily do this, we have 186 properties within our search results. Now, this is pretty much everything. So if I just wanted to come in and maybe target single family homes, I can select our property type of single family homes, apply, and that's going to run my search results down to 185. So that lot kind of got out of there. So you can target different types of properties. Same thing here, if you were targeting a farm area and maybe you wanted, it was a larger area, and you wanted to target homes that were just from two to five million, you were looking for luxury homes to target, you could put in your value range. And then that would give you homes within your identified area that are within that value. So think of ways that you can use these features to narrow down to the types of properties that you want to target in your farm for the type of campaign that you're running. And then what you do is you just come in and you're going to find the sold date field. And we're gonna check the radio button for the date range. Now the date range does work off of calendar values, so you can click in here and the calendar pops right up. But I'm one that likes to just type in my dates. I'm a little quicker at it. So I could come in and say, hey, I want everything from January 1st of 2017 to 1231, 2017. I'm going to go up to the top and select apply. And I just write that number down. So I have 11 properties that sold within that time frame and that's 2017 then i'm just going to go back down to my date fields and i'm going to change that 2017 to 2018 i'm just going to change that year it'll say range is not valid and only did that because i changed the to date before the final date. So that won't interfere with our search. I can select apply and I get nine properties in 2018. If we kind of want to do a year to date, 
I can come in and say, hey, I want everything from January 1st, 2019. And then I can just remove this and use the calendar date to get to today's date, which would be the 27th. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply and I get four properties. So I know we have four properties that sold uh, and we're almost at the end of the first half of the year. Okay, so what I may wanna do then is clear this out. Once I select clear here and apply, I'm gonna get back to all 186 properties. And then I can see we have one property that's pended. Okay, so really maybe by the end of July, we'll have five properties um, that sold within the first half of the year. And then we're just gonna do a little bit of math. So let me just try to minimize my screen here because this is the only time it likes to work with my calculator. Okay. So it's just a little bit of math. We had in 2018, nine properties that sold. We're gonna take the nine properties and we're gonna divide that by the 185 single family homes, which is 4.8%, okay? It's 0.8%. 0486, well, if we just come in and times that by 100, we're gonna get a 4.86% turnover rate. So almost at that 5% turnover rate. And then if I clear that out and look at 2017, we had 11 properties, divide that by the 185 single family homes, times that by 100, and we are at a 5.9%. Now we are projecting five sales for the first half of the year. If we have five sales in the second half of the year, I didn't mean to close that calculator, sorry. We can project if we have 10 sales in 2019, if I divide that by the number of single family homes, and then times that by 100, we are at a 5.4% turnover rate in this subdivision. So that's how you can identify a turnover rate in a market area. You're just going to use this date range and apply those date filters. Then it's the total number sold divided by that total number of properties in the community. So I hope that uh, helps answer that question. The next thing that we wanna talk about is how to customize your farm area, okay? So again, customizing your farm area just allows you to make sure that you're targeting an area that's within your budget. So you can customize a farm area from within your search results, you can, if you want to have your farm area, here we have search results uh, for Nantucket and Carlsbad. We can just go ahead and save this, okay? And we can rename it, and this is our farm. Nantucket and click OK, and then we have that saved farm area. So you can save it right from here, but you can also narrow this down. So maybe I'm a new agent, this is a lot of properties, I just wanna test the waters, 
I'm going to trim it down a little bit, or maybe this isn't enough properties for you. Uh, maybe you work with a team. So a lot of you are pooling your funds together to create a larger farm area. We could come in and say, hey, let's draw a shape and we want to do a polygon and we're going to come in along College Boulevard and we're going to grab Nantucket all along here. But we're also going to grab the community just to the north. Okay. So if I zoom out a little bit. There we go. I can come along here. We can search in this area. So this is going to more than double 409 properties. Okay. We're going to market this as a team. Again, you can calculate that turnover rate. And now I can just click in this and I can search in that area. I can edit that area and I can also save this area. So this is my farm. And this, we could just come in and say Lake Boulevard. college and whatever those side streets may be and then you have that customized farm area for that region as well so you do have the ability you just need to get to the map once you get to the map you can target any area by drawing a shape you can even come in and show geographies and look at those intermediate neighborhoods and you can target those from your map. Okay. So you can click on that. You can create an activity report, create a neighborhood report. You can search in that geography, but that's going to allow you to save that farm area. And then again, if you wanted to apply that criteria to target homes within a particular value range or property style, you can still drill that area down. When you select save again, it will lock in those features. Okay, so that, that's how you can go in and create that customized farm area. Those customized farm areas are gonna be in your saved dropdown. So from right from within here, we have, there's our farm area for our Nantucket. Here's our farm area for our Lake Boulevard. So they're all within that market area. So that's how you can create and save and still be able to make sure that your farm area is within a manageable budget and a reasonable number of properties that you can touch consistently every three to four weeks for more than a 12 month period. And you can just go back to that search and pull it up and pull it up and pull it up as you need to. Another thing that I want to share with you before we leave, um, well, let me just keep going for a second. So what we're going to do now is talk about some tools that allow you to um, converse with the homeowner. But before I do that, from my desktop, I want to create a couple of market area activity reports. So let's say we're looking at that Nantucket in Carlsbad. And I want to see the activity over the last month. Now, if it's a new farm area to you and you want to go back a little bit further, maybe the last three months, you can go up to six months back. You can do last month, last week, or the last three days. And you can, I just select show all, so you get all of the new listings, any distressed property, anything that's gone under contract, anything that's recently sold. A great one is anything that's recently expired. If you have an expired on your, your market area activity list, that's a property that you can door knock right away, engage with the homeowner, see if they would still entertain listing their property. Look at their home values. Have they gone up? Have they gone down? 
Uh, if you're not interested in the leasing activity, you can uncheck that. But I always like to have it because sometimes you just want to make sure that you're not missing out on any information. Maybe they say, oh, well, I know so-and-so is renting their home across the street. What a, what a house is in this neighborhood rent for? You just want to be able to have the answer to all of those questions. So again, we get our market area activity here. We get what's gone on in the last three weeks or three months. And then we can come up and just say create a report. We're going to create that market area activity report. We're going to keep everything selected. We have changes over the last three months. There's active listings, maybe include open houses. And then I'm just going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to select run report. And that's going to generate our report. Now I'm going to go back to our search results for a minute. While that report's generating, I want to take a couple of seconds just to share with you information on our heat maps. And I like to share this information about the heat maps because these heat maps are included in that market area activity report. And heat maps are just color schemes that represent different data values. So if you wanna see how this neighborhood compares to the market as far as home values, you can see we are in a dark blue area. So we're in million dollar homes compared to the lighter blue areas, which are probably six to $700,000 homes. When you get into this really light blue area, you're probably looking at four to 500,000. If you wanna see growth over the last 12 months, if you wanna see your concentration of distressed properties, we're a little high compared to neighboring areas here with our concentration of distressed properties. You get things like average sales price and list price. I always take, like to take a look at the flood zones. So be aware of these heat maps, take a look at them, have these values fresh in your mind when you're going out on that door knock. Another thing that you may wanna do uh, is take a look at the neighborhood demographics as well. So I would come in, we have our market area activity report. You can change the radio button to go into your neighborhood report. We're looking at Nantucket and Carlsbad. But before we create this report, I wanna take a step back and just take a minute and talk about our report because reports are a great way to convey that value. So before you farm or before you door knock, you're gonna to wanna to have that market area activity report open. If you currently have any listings in that farm area, print out a mini property report for that listing uh, and a property report out for that property if you were a party to a sale at a home in that neighborhood and now you're gonna start farming that neighborhood, print out a property report that has the sales information on it. They're great reports to have in hand. And another good report to have is the neighborhood report. But when you go in and you generate all of these reports, you wanna cultivate, again, that brand awareness. So we're gonna take a step ahead and cultivate brand awareness. So you're gonna see this Alice and James logo on the upper left-hand side. That is the brand or the logo that's automatically going to appear in all of these reports that you generate. So that will be the logo on the top of the report when you're looking at a report. And then if you scroll down here, you're gonna see all of the elements that we can include in the report. The elements, contact information, comes off of your profile. So it's really important for you to come in here and view your full profile. Make sure your agent photo is up to date. If you have a team logo that you wanna upload, um, I always say maybe you don't have a team logo, but if you're an agent and you happen to be on a team, put in a photo of everyone on the team so they get that facial recognition. It doesn't have to be a brokerage brand. 
It's just any additional logo that you want to have appear on your report. You have all of your contact information. We have a couple new fields. So if you haven't been in RPR, we feed in your designations and certifications. So make sure you have those up to date with your association. You can add your title. So if you're a realtor, but a broker sales associate and you want to add that title, you can add that title. Make sure all of your phone numbers are up to date, add as many as you need, fax numbers, emails, so on and so forth. And then you can just save that information. It's gonna lock in that personal information. Then you can go back to that reports page. And now you'll have all of your available information to appear on that report cover page. The next thing I wanna talk about are general report preferences. So right here under general report preferences, we have a link that says manage custom pages. And I can click into here and it allows me to upload my own custom report into RPR that I can then incorporate into the professional RPR reports that I generate. And this is done on a two tier level. So when you guys go in, you may see that Allison James has uploaded brokerage reports that are available to all of the agents. So there could be up to five brokerage reports. And then you can add up to five personal reports. These could be your agent bio, your community involvement, past client testimonials, how to stage your home, the importance of curb appeal, what buyers are looking for, what to do in the spring market, in the winter market, in the fall market. How do you advertise or market these properties through social media? Okay. Um, maybe you work with buyers and you wanna have community information, utility information, power information, cable information. So if they're looking at purchasing a home, they know who their power company would be, who their cable company would be. The options for this is endless. And all you have to do is come in and add. So what, wherever these things are on your desktop, you can go ahead and add this information from your desktop. You would just click on it. I think I have my bio here. You can click on it, select add or open, and it's gonna import it into RPR. You can choose to put it at the beginning or at the end. You can view the page. And if you have some old ones that are out of date, just delete them and update it with a newer version. Select save, and that's gonna lock those custom pages in. So when you come in to create those reports and you go into more details, you have that custom page with your contact information, and then those elements for that report, you can go ahead and select run report and that's gonna generate that report. If you don't know our, market, our neighborhood report, let me just go ahead and open this up for you. It's gonna give you the boundaries of that neighborhood. You get the neighborhood housing stats and charts. You get that median estimated home value, the percentage of rent versus own. Median list price versus list volume, population, growth, density, male to female, ratio, education levels, household breakdown, economy, unemployment, labor force, occupational categories, rain, sun, snow, commute time, how people get to work uh, is our neighborhood demographics. You can also get the neighborhood demographics. Remember, we were at the homepage. We went into our neighborhoods. We, let me just pull it off of our recent searches. We looked at neighborhoods in Carlsbad, California. You can click any one of these headers and you can get those neighborhood demographics, that summary of information. And then it's the neighborhood to the city, to the county, to the state, to the country. And you can create a report if you wanted to create that neighborhood report from there as well. What I wanna do now 
is flip over to our mobile device. And that will, let me see if I could actually just bring it forward here. Here we are. This is going to be the last of our presentation. So I'm just going to enter into full screen. This is my phone, so please forgive me if I have a missed call. It is on Do Not Disturb, um, but it will um, it will show on my screen. So this is my home page of my iPhone. I do use an iPhone, so what I'm going to demo here is on an iPhone. If you're on an Android-based phone, everything should still work the same way. So if I have my screen open, and right here, I have my notification that I generated a report for Nantucket in Carlsberg. If I want to view this report, I can just hit the view option and click right on it. I'm going to authenticate into the app, and it's going to open up that neighborhood report and this happens to be that market area activity report okay so i have that information in there now i can close out of this and it's going to bring me into the home page of our app okay now what i want to do first is just click on the gear on the upper right hand side and i'm going to open up the notifications and i'm going to talk about the notifications for just a minute notifications just allow you um, to get a push notification through your mobile device. All of you should know what a push notification is uh, by now. Uh, it's just an alert that comes up on your mobile device. Anytime you generate a report, you'll see on there. Anytime you have a saved property, and that saved property happens to go from off market to active or it goes from uh has a list price change or an estimated value change so anytime you want to receive that push notification you just toggle that switch on and then if i drag my screen down i probably have some earlier push notifications uh, that are available. So when I'm not looking at my phone or I'm not in my app, I'll just get alert that says, hey, you have this saved property and the value increased or the value decreased or it went from for sale to off market or you generated a report. So these are all just notifications. So if I want to view that activity, I can do that right through my mobile device. So that's just the push notifications that you have. You can toggle them over and then if you just click the box closed, it will automatically save that information. Another thing I'd like to point out here um, is your profile information. So here is your profile data and here you'll see there is a link that says you can share your contact information. And this just allows you to send your profile to a potential lead via text message. So instead of giving them a business card and not having a way to contact them in the future, you can essentially send them a digital business card by email or by text message. Oh, there's my photo. It's just a little late in loading. You can send it to them by email or text message, and then you have that contact information when you're doing it. So let's say we are out, we're walking around, we're door knocking. I open my phone, it targets my location in Nantucket, 
you'll see at the top, there's a little circle with an arrow in it. That is my map view. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that icon. And what's going to happen is it's going to say, hey, this, sorry, guys. Um, it's going to say, hey, this is where you're standing in this neighborhood. So you will see that little orb is where I am. And then you will see this link that says redo search in that area. And when I redo that search in that area, it's going to pull up all of the parcels of property that are around me. Now, on the lower right-hand side of the map, you're going to see three little buttons in a circle. I can click on that, and that's going to allow me to overlay schools, overlay parcel lines, draw a map area, determine distance, look at traffic counts. So you can look at this information. So let's just say we're walking on this road and this property right here with the red dot is off market and it's in financial distress and there is a for sale by owner sign on the front lawn. We can click into this property. We can see the value or the RVM we could see property value growth. We can see the beds and the bathrooms. I can look at nearby properties for sale, nearby comps. I can create a full blown comparison, a full blown CMA. It's a four step process. Confirm the property facts, public listing, if you have any changes or discrepancies. It's going to pull up all of the recently sold properties. You'll see from here, we can add these as comps. These recent sales are going to be both MLS sales as well as off-market sales. And I can view them in a list view as well as a map view. So let me explain something really quick. You're going to see some dots here that are gray and green. Those gray dots sold over 91 days ago. The green dots sold within 90 days. Okay. You can change the order, okay, of when they sold. You can rate them on how it compares to the subject property. You can add notes for your client and you can select next and it's going to set a value where you can download or email that report right to your client or that for sale by owner, property owner. Okay. I'm going to exit the reports. So easy as that. If you want to save it, This is the FISBO on real court, okay? So you can add it to your save properties list. If I go back to the home page, you will see to the bottom, we have reports, we have recent, and we have saved. So if I get into the neighborhood and I forgot to print that market area activity report, I forgot to print that neighborhood report, I can print it right from here for that market area. If I printed the report and I wanna view them, I go to recent. I have all of the recent properties that I've looked at, all of the recent searches that I've executed, whether I did it on my computer or mobile device, all of the recent reports that I've generated. So I can view them and I can share them via text message, Facebook, Gmail, Messenger, with those prospects that I meet while in farming. You also have the ability to add notes, okay? So if you engage with a homeowner, you can put that note into that mobile device. So in a recap, 
I shared with you how to calculate that marketability, identify research or farm area, understand that turnover rate, create a customized area if you need to customize your farm area and how to save that, how to use the RPR app for answers on the go, convey that value through those RPR reports and market updates. Remember, you can use those reports as you're conversing through the RPR app and then cultivating that brand awareness, making sure that your profile and custom pages are up to date. And I'm gonna put a, a call out just to you guys to let you know, um, we have a new feature coming, uh, I believe in July, which is the ability to export the results of your farm area into mailing labels. So you don't have to leave our PR now to generate your mailing labels for a farm area. You can go right to paper copy or you can put them into an export if you take it to a professional printer. So go ahead and go for it. Locate a farm area, calculate your turnover rate. Okay. If you need help at any time, reach out to our support desk. You can access RPR by NARRPR.com. And then for all things RPR, visit our blog at blog.narrpr.com. On behalf of myself, thank you guys for joining us. That's going to conclude our presentation. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining us. And a huge thank you, Katie. Um, just so everyone knows, we will be emailing the replay out um, in 24 hours, so you will be getting a copy. Um, have a great day, and we hope to see you next time. Thanks, everyone.